So the radioactive law of integration. So we will we'll look at the layer like how the law of radioactive decay is happening. Rutherford and Soddy found that the rate of disintegration is independent of physical and chemical conditions. The rate of disintegration at any instant is directly proportional to the number of atoms of the element present at that time. This is known as radioactive law of disintegration. Let n naught be the number of radioactive atoms present initially and n be the number of atoms at a constant time t. So dn be the number of atoms undergoing the disintegration in a small interval of time dt. The rate of integration is given by minus of dn by dt is directly proportional to n. So dn by dt is equal to minus lambda into n. That is the value. But lambda is a constant and it is known as dk constant or disintegration constant. And the negative sign indicates that n decreases with the increase in time. From the previous equation, we got dn by n is equal to minus lambda into dt. Integrating the above equation, we will be getting log of n base e is equal to minus lambda t plus c, where c is the constant of integration. At t is equal to 0, n will become a naught, n is equal to a naught. We will be getting the equation as log of n naught base e is equal to c. As you know, log e, log n base e minus equal to minus lambda t plus c and log n naught base e is equal to c. Substituting this equation for c here, you will be getting this equation. So, taking log e as common, n by n naught is equal to minus lambda t. So, n by n naught is equal to e power minus lambda t and n is equal to n naught into e power minus lambda t. The final equation shows that uh, the number of atoms of a radioactive substance uh, decreases exponentially with increase in time. Initially, the disintegration takes place at a very faster rate. Now, we will talk about the half-life period. Half-life period is defined as the time taken for half the radioactive nuclei to decay. As time increases, uh, the n gradually decreases exponentially. At infinite time is required for the complete disintegration of all the atoms. Since all the radioactive elements have infinite life lifetime period, in order to distinguish the activity of one element with other, half-life period and mean life period are introduced. The half-life period of your radioactive element is defined as the time taken for one half of the radio element to undergo disintegration. So, from the law of disintegration, n is equal to n0 into e power minus lambda t, where n0 be the number of radioactive elements in the initial stage and n be the number of atoms available during the disintegration. Let t of be the half life period, then at log of 2 base e is equal to lambda into t of. A t is equal to t of and n is equal to n0 by 2 because the number of atoms will become half. So, n0 by 2 is equal to n0 into e power minus lambda into t 1 by 2. And this indicates a log of because n0, n0 will get cancelled. n0 and n0 will get cancelled. You will be getting log of base, log of 2 base e is equal to lambda of t of. So, t of is equal to log 2 base e divided by lambda. So, substituting your value log 10, 2 into 10 power 2.3026, you got 0 0.6931 divided by lambda. This indicates the half-life period. Half-life period is inversely proportional to its decay constant. So, this is the equation arrived. The concept of offline period can be understood from a radioactive substance at the end of t power half, as 50% of the material remain unchanged. 
After another t half, at the end of 2 into t power half, it will become 25 percent remain unchanged. At the end of 3, it will become 12.5 remains unchanged and so on. When the radioactive substance is undergoing the disintegration, the atom which integrates at first has zero life and that integrates disintegrates at the last will be having an infinite life. The actual life of each atom ranges from zero to infinity. The mean life of a radioactive substance is defined as the ratio of total lifetime of all the radioactive atoms to the total number of atoms in it. So, the mean life period is calculated from the law of disintegration and it can be shown that the mean life period is a reciprocal of the decay constant. The half life and mean life are related as T half is equal to 0.6931 divided by lambda which is equal to 0.6931 into tau. So, the activity of a radioactive substance is defined as a rate at which the atoms decay. This is referred to as radioactivity. If n is the number of atoms present at a certain time t, the activity r is given by r is equal to minus of dn divided by dt. The unit of activity is the Becquerel which is named after the greatest scientist Henry Becquerel. So, one Becquerel is equal to one integration per disintegration per second. Further moving towards activity, Curie is defined as the quantity of radioactive substance which gives 3.7 to 10 power 10 disintegration per second. That's 3.7 into 10 power 10 becquerel. This is equal to the activity of 1 gram of radium. That's the concept of Madame Becu Curie. So, this is the typical examples of radioactive elements. The type, the source activity is given and it is Curie Becquerel and it is having the definition as 3.7 into 10 power 10 disintegration per second. That is referred to as 1 disintegration per second. If it is the exposure of gamma rays, The unit is Roy Chen. So 2.58 into 10 power 4 minus 4 coulombs per kilogram in dry air at STP or 1 coulomb per cc, 1 cc dry air at STP. The absorbed dose it's a rad or gray GY. It's 0 0.01 joule per kilogram or 1 joule per kilogram or 1 GO is equal to 100 radium, 100 rad. Biologically, you can dose is a type for that rem or sievert is there and QFR into dose into rad or QFG into dose into gray. This is the definition.